Welcome to TJ's podcast. Yes, here we go. Got it going on. Thanks so much for listening and watching TJ's podcast, where we talk about the um, the very important things going on in our culture in a casual, funny way. <laughs> Uh, we're going to start with Graham Slam, go all over the internets and social media and, uh, and uh, give, give our um, expertise uh, analysis on what's going on in the world. And um, my faithful partner, Riggins, is here, fresh off a hot weekend, short work week because... Um, we're not, we're not coming in Friday because that's Good Friday, and uh, we are all Christians on the Ace and TJ show, and Easter is our holiest of holidays. Therefore, we, will, we won't be working on Good Friday, but we'll have material for you to consume. We'll just, we'll just do the work we would do on Good Friday, and we'll do it on uh, Just Okay Thursday or Wednesday. <laughs> right? Okay. So... One of the uh, one of the videos that uh, Riggins sent me this morning was a shocking video of a woman who was doing her spring cleaning. Um, and you say that this is uh, this is going around to so many people that it, I'm probably the last one to see it. Twenty five million people have watched this video of spring cleaning, and the main thing that she's doing is she's pulled her couch away from the wall and she's cleaning from behind the couch. And it looks disgusting. It's like, how, how do you get that much stuff behind your couch? It's remarkable. I, I've never seen anything like that. She said, I've lived in this house three years and I've never cleaned behind the couch. And then when she pulls the couch away, I mean, it looks like. It, it looks like even, everything that they get finished with uh, when they're using it, they just dump it behind the couch. It looked like every toy imaginable, every like paper plates. Yeah, if you opened a, an entire bag of trash and just dumped it back there. Yeah. I mean, that much stuff. Because all in front of the couch didn't look that terrible. Yeah. But underneath and behind the couch was just disgusting. And this is her talking about it. Oh, yeah. You uh, can plant here. Give me one second. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's it's absolutely insane. I moved into this house four years ago and haven't cleaned behind the couch since. I know what you're thinking, Madison, that is absolutely disgusting, and I am right there with you. Every few months it kind of crosses my mind, uh, but then something more important comes up, like basic things like laundry and dishes and stuff like that. But if you've been following along lately, um, I am single now, so I co-parent, and there's days during the week that I don't have my kids, like today. So I woke up this morning and I was like, if I do one thing today, it has to be clean under the couch. I knew it was gonna be bad, but I honestly didn't expect it to be this bad. Believe it or not, this one's gonna be this bad. Yeah. I know, honestly, I knew it was gonna be bad, but I didn't know it was gonna be this bad. <laughs> so we co-parent. Oh. So there's so much wrong with that in my book that's just so cringeworthy. Which, uh, uh, so is my using the term cringeworthy. <laughs> <laughs> but come on. You know what? Other people f have dishes to do and things like that, but they still don't have a pile of trash behind their couch. Yeah. I mean, a foot of trash, like, that high. Yeah, I, uh, your mom, my mom, your uh, Jody, they would have never in a million years thought that this was acceptable. No. You don't want to come down too hard on a, a newly single mother, but... It's like, holy cow, what is going on? Well, she was saying that she's a newly single mother, and that's a positive thing. Now that I, have, that I am a single mom, I have time to come and do these types of things. Because we co-parent, and he has the kids some days. We're consciously yeah. uncoupled. Oh, man. You're just a slob. That's all it is. Because I got news for you. My mama, uh, she worked. And she still, you know, had time to do dishes and cook meals. And, you know, there would have never been a mess behind the, the couch like that. 
And even if a, a mess had accumulated behind the couch, the last thing you would do is go, let me tell the entire yeah. world <laughs> how disgusting this house can get. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just a different way of thinking. And I wonder how many of those people uh, actually knew her name was Madison. Because when she said, and I know what you're saying, you're saying, Madison, you're going to da 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 I usually think when people use their their name in a, when they're telling a story like that, that it's kind of a kind of a um, mm, self-serving thing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, she was telling me, she said, Madison, you don't need to be doing that. And I guarantee if you were to go back and watch the story as it happened, the person wouldn't have called her by her name when she said that. She would have just said, you don't need to do that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. Um Riggins, you got this video of these people um, who are crazy acting in the grocery store. These old old people that are partying it up in the grocery store. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, but you know that happens right next door here. We have one of those grocery stores, that Lowe's Foods. Yeah, that's right. Um, like we could walk there in about five seconds. They have a uh, that section when you first walk in, that where the wine and all is, where they serve wine and beer, and people can sit there and and. You know, just relax. Uh, and then sometimes they have bands playing in there and they dance and stuff like that. I guess it's like a common thing now. I didn't know about it until I saw this video. But, yeah, it's like the people, these older people, they look like my, my parents' age, mm-hmm. 60s. Just, yeah, in the middle of the grocery store, dancing. It's like, I don't know, get, if I'm <laughs> grocery shopping, get the hell out of my way. I'm here <laughs> to get some pimento cheese and some pretzel tans. Just get out of the way. But... They're having fun. It looks like I don't yeah. want to come down too hard on them. But you know that's the thing. So many, so many things in our society are. As people go, well, they're not bothering anybody. It's making them feel good. So yeah. what does it matter? Like, okay, well, you can't use that as a catch-all for everything. There's some things that are just wrong. I'm not saying this is one of them. This doesn't bother me because I've been in there while they're doing it. And you walk in there's a like a three-piece little band playing and you know they're out there dancing and stuff because they're not in the way it's a uh, an area that's specific for that you know um but i also think if if you can't go buy groceries without um sipping a brewski yeah. <laughs> you know going over to the bar and getting a getting a beer and hanging out before you buy your groceries or whatever, then I, I don't, I can't relate to that because you know most people when they go to the grocery store they want to get in and get out. Exactly, I do have a problem with this actually. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think, there's but, plenty of places you can go dance. I, you know, when you're mingling with other people that are just trying to shop, I don't, I don't want. Well, I guess if they're old people though, they don't want to go to a lounge somewhere or yeah. where are you going to do that in the daytime? You know? Yeah, I don't know. Where are you going to go? And and if the weather's not great and it's not spring, they're not having these outdoor little festivals and things like that. So, you ever been, I don't know. been really messed up in a store? Like in college, it was a big thing to get drunk and go to Target. No. And people would be, or get super high and go to Target. No. Yeah, that's, that's bad. <laughs> uh, but in a grocery store, that'd be even more dangerous. Drunk in a grocery store, you just start buying all the crazy stuff. Well, I see younger people um in the grocery stores like that walking around drinking beer they're usually guys but drinking beer while they're grocery shopping really now are you going to be in there that long if you're a guy especially are you going to be in there buying that many groceries i just grocery shopping is not something you do uh leisurely no you know that's where that's why you make a list yeah and you're gonna gotta get this and you got a plan i'm gonna list my wife puts her list i don't but she does she goes to the store she puts her list in order of how they come in the store you know like i'm put produce first because that's the produce section where or i'm gonna put this first because i'm gonna start on that side of the store i don't do that i don't don't have to do that but there's always a plan and the plan is to make it as quick as possible it's not about mingling it's not a shopping mall right but even the people who aren't mingling with anybody, where they just say, hey, you know what? I'm going to go get an IPA so I can sip on that while I'm getting my groceries. Crazy. Yeah, I don't get that. It's the new kind of grocery store. Like that. I have a grocery store near me that's kind of like, it's not a Whole Foods, but it's kind of snobby. Mm-hmm. And like when you go, everything is, there's a theme to it. Like you can 
go past the fish section and then they blow that that ship horn wah, wah, and it's, it'll scare the crap out of you and then you go over to the produce section you got to pick your own herbs it's like so oh. dumb they got a little wheelbarrow in the dirt <laughs> it's annoying but they're not just grocery stores anymore uh, it's an experience everything has to be an experience it's like going into the apple store you can get drinks here well great i'm in the grocery store i'm looking for flour and you know crushed red pepper i don't i don't need a jackass that's three glasses of wine in dancing to bon jovi <laughs> it's annoying and it's okay to say that's yeah. annoying we're not we're not going to come over there and yell at them but yeah watch something on the internet that's annoying <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and you pay more usually at those grocery stores for for items. Yeah. So, yeah. You don't see people dancing at Aldi. Hell no. Food line, not mm -hmm. a chance. You get your ass knocked out. <laughs> get out of my way. <laughs> for fun. Yeah. Speaking of in the grocery store, I got a text from Rob on Friday after I went to the grocery store. I bought uh, Bojangles honey mustard. Oh Sell yeah. Sell it in bottles now, and I got I posted it on my Instagram story. Because it's my favorite dipping mm -hmm. sauce ever. And I got so many messages. Where did you get that? Where did you get that? I had to tell them. Food line. I didn't know they made that. I, who, they didn't announce it. Mm. But I got a bunch of messages, one from Rob included. Yeah, Rob was supposed to know that. Yeah. Right? And he's supposed to know all that kind of stuff? Not so. Well. All right, we have, uh, we have more crazy internet stuff and uh, to get to. And Riggins has found a list of uh, potential hobbies for me, uh, hobbies for men. I'm confident that you were going to find one. Okay. <laughs> Good. All right, we'll get on that next. TJ's podcast. We're here with our old friend, Richard Takato, the Richard Takato Companies. Uh, now, Richard, you just told me something very important that you wanted me to say, uh, but I don't remember what it was, so can you say it for me? <laughs> It was something about numbers and percentages and things that are, yeah, I don't this understand. Is the yeah, this is the best way for load officers to keep the majority of the revenue that they earn every year, just like a real estate agent. Got it. You know, real estate agents pay what we call a cap in industry. Normally, it's around sixteen to twenty thousand dollars, and then after they pay in their commission to, to reach that for the company, they keep a hundred percent of it. So we're going to do the same thing at Richard Ocado Companies. You as a loan officer are going to pay us a cap of sixteen thousand dollars, and everything else you you keep. It, everything else you earn is yours. So real quick, an example, if you make $200,000 in a year, I'm going to take 16,000 of it, and then you're going to keep 184. The traditional model that loan officers work on now, they do $200,000 in revenue, and they keep about 80,000 oh, or 100,000. Mm -hmm. Really? So this is going to change the game. We're going to do what other real estate firms have been doing for years, but we're doing it on the mortgage broker side. And this is something mm -hmm. that's not being done it's anywhere, not, it's totally different totally different not being done anywhere else we're also going to have revenue share so if you bring loan officers to us you're going to make money off you know you're going to make yeah. money from a downline just sure. like exp or keller williams wow. so it's you you got to check it out just go to work with richard.info it's simple work with richard.info see if it's for you give me a call let's have a conversation okay now you want me to try to say it yeah you say it. <laughs> check it out work with richard.info Hi, I'm Thomas Davis, and let me tell you why I'm a proud member of Team Neogenics. If your nagging pain is keeping you from being active, do something about it. Join the long list of pros and average Joes who have found relief with our stem cell and regenerative therapies. After trying all the others, I decided to try Neogenics. My knees and shoulders haven't felt this good since my college days. If you want to get back in the game, do what I did. Visit Neogenics, where all you have to lose is pain. Our nation's second president, John Adams, always slept on the left side of the bed. He believed this would increase his chances of having positive dreams and a more successful next day. That's why every mattress we sell here at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress includes a left side. And for those that prefer waking up on the right side of the bed, our mattresses come with one of those too. This President's Day, you can save up to $500 on Tempur-Pedic sets. Only at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress. Back to TJ's podcast. Hey, here's a reminder. Make sure uh, you don't miss tomorrow's Ace and TJ, I mean, uh, TJ's podcast. Because um, we're having another law day tomorrow. The um, TJ's podcast legal expert, 
Wiki Ryan will be on to discuss uh, all of these diet drug lawsuits that are happening now. People coming and suing these these companies and saying the side effects got me and um, looking looking for um, liability. And we'll we'll talk about all of that kind of stuff. So that should be really interesting. Can you win a, a lawsuit against a drug maker? Yeah. Is that even possible? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Has that yeah. happened before? Uh-huh. I feel like they'd have the best, world's best lawyers ever. Mm-hmm. You would think. Well, I mean, that whole movie um, uh, called Dope Sick, that's yeah, what that yeah, was yeah. about. They, you know, that big lawsuit <laughs> against uh, the um, the makers of, uh, what was it? What is that? That pain pain medicine. Not fentanyl. Uh, uh, whatever whatever it was. Oxycodone. Or yeah, that's what it was, I think. One of the oxys. Uh, so that's tomorrow with um, with Wiki Ryan, slip and fall lawyer from Texas. So, um, Riggins um, has a list of hobbies that um, that men can quickly uh, jump into. Yeah, and you think I can quickly cut them all down because there'll be none none that I like. So I've been talking about wanting to get a hobby. Yeah, um, and. A lot of people have said, you know, you have a hobby. It's cooking. And I, that's, I, that's true. true. That's true. I do have that. But um, it needs to be a, a hobby that doesn't cost a lot. And since we don't eat the kind of cooking that I do, you know, every night at my house, it's like a on Saturdays we'll have uh, fattening meals. And then other than that, we eat clean meals. That it would just end up being a waste because I'd cook all this delicious stuff and there would be no one to eat it, you know. And I'm not taking that to like the, you know, the shelter or anything because they don't deserve it. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> no, they don't. I don't think they let you take non-perishables to that kind of that kind of deal. But anyway, so what is the list? We can run run down the list and uh, let's see what you got. These are hobbies for men. Martial arts. I have thought about that. There's a um, I know two martial arts teachers personally, and I have thought about doing that. That's a good one. What kind of martial arts do they teach? Uh, one of them is um, um, what do you call it? Taekwondo, and the other is um, that Brazilian wrestling. What's it called? Jiu-jitsu. 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 Yeah, jiu-jitsu. What Joe Rogan does. Yeah. That's badass. Yeah. Way more badass than karate, I think. Hmm. This karate looks like a one-way ticket to get your yeah. ass whipped. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I need to get back on that. I'm surprised you'd be into that. I thought that would have been a no way. Mm-mm. Woodworking. Nah, I'm... Whittling. I could see you whittling. You can see me do it out there out whittling. Out on the porch. All right. When you said it the other day, mm-hmm. you were sitting out there to clear your head with a cup of coffee. I thought, there he is. A little thing of wood, a knife. You like knives. You kind of get in there and whittle something. But that that qualifies as art. And I'm no good at art of any kind. Okay. You, know, you got to be an artist to whittle. Uh, photography. I do have a flair for photography. Do you? Yeah. But then again, that's an expensive hobby. Is it? Yeah, because, I mean, you got to have good camera and you got to have lights and, you, you know, all of that stuff. A dark room. I don't have a dark room. Dark room. <laughs> good Lord. <laughs> I didn't think about that. Um, gardening. Um, kind of established you don't want to yeah. outside uh grilling uh i put that in with cooking, cooking you know right. home brewing no a lot no. of guys are into that no, no in that's garage. not me that's not me uh leather working again that's art um archery uh yeah that might be cool but then again a, a bow and arrow is expensive. A bow, compound bow is expensive. Yeah, um, but it's a one-time thing. So yeah, I could, I could, I could spend a lot of time doing that. Kill some of those deer out in your backyard? Mm, accidentally, maybe. Well, when I'm learning. Obviously. Wink. <laughs> um, let's see. Hiking. Get you some hiking boots. Get out in yeah. nature. You like walking through I do. trails and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I do. But I would have to wait until the fall 
to start that because I'm not getting out there with snakes. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to walk up on a snake. You're scared of snakes. Mm-hmm. Uh, what about rock climbing? Scared of heights. <laughs> Volunteering. To do what? I don't know. Maybe we, Meals on Wheels. Well, you don't even get to cook at Meals on Wheels. My mom found that out. Um, I don't know. Volunteering. Uh, maybe go to the soup kitchen. Yeah. Although you said they don't deserve good food. <laughs> uh, I don't know. You yeah. Volunteer for your church. Become a, a lector. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I could do. I, I mean... I do. I've done a lot of charity work in my time, but yeah, sure. Like, yeah, I would be if I were going to do that as a hobby. I would just start a new charity of some sort. Yeah, yeah. Uh, canoeing. Or I basically I have a charity that that I could be volunteering for. Yeah, yeah. Peyton's promise. Mm-hmm. Go ahead, canoeing. Canoeing. Yeah. You like the lake? You like the paddle board? Mm-hmm. Paddle boarding could be another one that I could really get back into. I saw a girl fall off her paddle board right on top of like a bull shark over the weekend oh i mean it's like the in florida i don't they have know. a lot of bull sharks in florida i mean it was the worst timing ever she starts stumbling and those sharks are all around and she falls on top of it bam it's crazy did she get eaten i don't think so huh. i think it Good. scared the sharks up. i was like what the hell is that those bull sharks are aggressive you don't want to mess with a bull shark nuts that's a bunch of bull shark is what that is <laughs> now this says chess no. That's what I suggest. Nerds. You'd like that. Uh, dancing? Um, no. A lot of young guys <laughs> are into doing the uh, the country bar. I don't oh, know yeah. what they call it. But, I mean, line they, dancing. I guess it's line dancing. dancing. Yeah. They're way into that. Do you know that um, the girl's name is Lindsay, and she's got red hair. She's little, and she comes to a lot of our uh, Ace and TJ events. Uh, she's young. And uh, her hair is red, but it's uh, like a burgundy color red, real dark okay. red. She and her boyfriend do that. They go to, uh, she used to be a, uh, I want to say she was one of the Panthers cheerleaders or something at one point, but but she's got dancing in her background and they do those country dance classes it and stuff fun. like that. Yeah. I think, didn't Ace and Amanda go do one one time? I don't know. I think they did. It was like a some kind of a gift for her or something to go do country line dancing. <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, but no, thank you on me no, for that. Not for no. you. Okay. And that's a shame because Jody loves to dance. Yeah, she does. Mm-hmm. I've danced with her. Yeah. She's a good dancer. She, yeah, she loves it. Uh, gaming? Get into gaming. <laughs> no. Uh, Golf? Nah. the answer to that. Um, investing? Is that a hobby? I don't, well, we're getting to the bottom of the barrel. You yes, pretty so. much shot down everything else. Uh, learning a musical instrument. I thought of that because my daughter left behind her piano, and when she moved off, I could learn. I've always wanted to know to learn how to play the piano. Sure. That yeah, would, I could do that. So martial arts and the piano; those are good ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are good ones. Weightlifting, music, a couple other options. Yeah. Pottery. <laughs> yeah, pottery. That's me. The pottery. Yeah, well, I mean, none of those were working for you. Mm-hmm. But martial arts, okay, maybe that's the place to go. Yeah, so I can play the piano, and if anybody says anything about it, I'll whoop their ass. Hell yeah. Let's we'll just combine the two. Keep it right in the gooch. Uh, I actually think everybody at this point, all um, law-abiding, God-fearing Americans, need to be learning how to fight and shoot is we need to be learning how to protect ourselves now more than ever in this country we're i think we're in for some bad times lawlessness lawlessness abounds and we're gonna we're gonna need to be able to protect our own so start a militia That's what i would do. love i would love that <laughs> It's good. Yeah, uh, but that that would end up just being a career, not just a hobby. Though. Yeah, I don't know how you can do that as a hobby. You can't do that part time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, earlier, Riggins on the um, on the regular old show, you were talking about um, these ways that people order stuff at Subway that's yeah. all messed up, and you said. Um, and this is how you 
would order and not be judged. They do that a lot now. Yeah. And I talk about where they'll say, you don't want the person working at the, at the subway or at the restaurant or whatever to judge you. Where I'm, is, is it just because I'm, I'm old and come from a different time that I don't give a damn whether somebody's judging me who works in a store or not? Yeah. It's not that I don't care about them as far as being a person. I treat them nicely and all that. But as far as judging me for what I'm paying f- to to get, that never enters my mind. I, and I couldn't I, I couldn't care less. Yeah. If I ordered four scoops of mayonnaise on my six inch sub and the person making it is judging me for it, I don't care. But is it millennials and Gen Zers who who do care whether the person thinks something about them or not? Yeah. And why is that? Because uh, because social media maybe has always made you more conscious of oh, am I being judged? Is this wrong? Is because it seems like now everywhere young people turn, there's somebody telling them not to do something. Don't yeah. do this. Don't do that. Yeah, you sure. don't want this. You don't want that. It's a natural reaction. Because think about it like, you know, if you put on an outfit and you're like, oh, this looks good. I like this. You might get two of your coworkers that are like, oh, that, that's really nice. That looks really nice on you. But imagine you post it on social media, just whatever you're wearing. And now you have 100 people telling you, I like this. I don't like that. I like. It's like it's overwhelming yeah. the amount of people's opinions that are just thrust on you. And you think that bleeds into, I'm spending money that I earned in a place of business that wants me to spend my money here, but I have to be careful of what I'm asking for with my money because the the employee is going to judge me negatively for it. Yeah, that's the thought process. Yeah. It might not happen, but that's the thought process. Somebody even pointed out, they were like, There's, that's so wrong because what I've just done in doing that little thing where... I'm picturing what you're thinking about me is in my head. I've made you an asshole. That's very judgmental. Right. You know, yeah. and so it's really my fault. I've, I'm thinking now this guy is looking at me like I'm a piece of crap. Uh-huh. Now I've just made you a jerk. And I, and now I still feel terrible right. about myself. Like no one's winning in this scenario. It's like you automatically think the worst of the person. Yeah. I know they're going to think that I'm terrible for what I'm about to do because yeah. they seem, they seem like that type of person. So now I feel terrible you're a jerk Mm -hmm. in my head and everything's bad (laughs) so we just we're we're living in a culture that walks around second and third guessing every move that we make sure and is that all races of people or is it mainly just white people no i think it's all races really yeah but the age thing definitely plays into it yeah, and I and it's not uh, because I've gotten old. I've started not caring because I never, I never would have even cared about that. But it's because of the, you know, the times that have changed the culture. I get it. I get it. Well, this is my lesson to young people: stop caring. If you're spending your money in a store or in a restaurant, and you want something a certain way. All they got to do is say, no, we can't do that. And then you're, you're done with it. Don't be worried about whether they think badly of you or think that you're stupid. You may never see those people again. Who cares? If somebody going to order something crazy and not care, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And look how I turned out. You know, more, more young people that could pattern their lives after me would be so much better, I think. Mm-hmm. That's what I think. Now, there's a, um, a woman who claims to have caught her boyfriend cheating on her by using um, an app that has nothing to do with catch your boyfriend cheating. Yeah. It's just a regular everyday app that she's managed to use. So we'll, uh, we'll give you the information on that. Maybe it can help you. Coming up next. More of TJ's podcast is coming up. When it comes to losing weight, sometimes you don't even know where to start. You know that it needs to happen, but you need some help. Well, you start by going to acetj.com slash weight loss and ordering Calitrin. Calitrin is scientifically proven to help you lose weight, and it is not a drug. 
It is not a drug. Repeat that. So here's what you do. You go to acetj.com slash calitrin. Order three months, and then you'll get three months free. Four months, four months free. That's how it works with calitrin. Winter is here, which means you're just going to stay inside and not do anything fun and exciting, right? No, that is wrong, because this year you're going to go to acetj.com slash Gaston and see all of the incredible things that you can do right now in Gaston County. Everything is laid out for you from things to do to restaurants to bars to shopping to unique weekend activities. And we'll get you ready for the spring and the summer with a list of all their great festivals. Find all of this and much more at acetj.com slash Gaston. If you're so frustrated because you're having to run around all the time, you're so busy, you feel like you're not getting your family something great to eat, then you need Culver's. It's the perfect thing for you. Always made to order fresh, hot ingredients all day, every day. And not only do they have the freshest ingredients all day, every day, but they are a part of the community. They're proud to be a part of the Indian Trail community where they're under new ownership. Belmont, University area, Salisbury. Make them a part of your daily routine. Make it your new neighborhood spot. Short waits for the freshest food in town. Get details at acetj.com slash Culver's. Welcome back, world, to TJ's podcast. Podcast. Yeah, yeah. So... Women are always talking about uh, how good their skills are when it comes to investigating a boyfriend or a husband that they um, they suspect is cheating. And I, I'll give them credit. A lot of a lot of women will. I mean, they'll sit down and just pour over something and put hours into it and. And come up with things that I, I would never think of as far as, you know, running the technology to be able to track this and this and this and this. But this woman says that her friend didn't do any of that. All she did was get a meal delivered from Postmates. So this is how it worked. Oh, wait a minute. Darn it. Sorry, I'm still getting used to this. That's okay. Yeah. I know found out she got cheated on because one day she was just ordering Postmates for her and her boyfriend on his phone and she realized that the last saved address was an address she did not recognize like it was not his address it was not hers so she goes to his order history the last time he had ordered was a week prior when she was out of town and it was to that address she was like um whose address is this and he was like oh just this guy from work we went over to his house after work last week to play video games while you were out of town she was like since when have you ever hung out with somebody from work I was like whatever just try to let it go move on but over time, she just had this gut feeling that something was so off. So what did she decide to do? She pulled up on the house. She literally went to this house, knocked on the door. This girl opens the door and she's like, hi, I'm so-and-so's girlfriend. Like, do you know him? This girl was like, his girlfriend? What? Yes, I know him. We work together. Basically tells her that they had been hooking up for months and had no idea that he had a girlfriend or anything. Can anyone tell me about a time when a girl's intuition has ever been wrong? Okay, she's edited and talking so quickly because evidently she doesn't think anybody over the age of 35 cares about this story or would like to understand it. <laughs> so she said, where is this address? Oh, he's like, it's like a guy I work with. Like, we got food delivered one night. So then she was just like, had this gnawing feeling and like couldn't let it go. And so like... um. Can you tell me, like, when a woman's intuition has ever been wrong? Well, that's not really a woman's woman's intuition. When you're looking at his phone and there's a strange address that he had food delivered to, yeah. and then you start getting suspicious from that. That's not a woman's intuition. Yeah. And there have been countless millions of times when a woman's quote-unquote intuition was wrong. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But first of all, there's no such thing as a woman having uh, a higher power of, uh, of intuitiveness than men just because they're women. I don't, I don't believe that to begin with. Um, I think women are so sneaky themselves that they, that they can spot maybe how, what they would be doing if they were cheating or something and that's how they use that what a spin mm -hmm. but anyway 
I, I don't know if he were cheating. Why would he be letting her see the addresses in his in his phone for Postmates? So dumb. Well, first of all, do you believe the story? I do. I think it's yeah. believable. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think if you're cheating, the last thing you're going to do is hand over your phone for any reason. Mm hmm. I just, yeah, I wouldn't. Have. But I think, um, I think the story would be more believable if she actually would slow down and talk like a normal person. <laughs> She's trying to, I mean, it's 55 seconds. She's trying to get under that minute mark. <laughs> it's story time. Yeah. But no, I mean, that's a crazy story. I'm just, I'm just kidding about the ladies being so sneaky and all. Just joshing you ladies. But then um, there's something that I haven't heard today that, um, what is it, Riggins? It's funny, you said. So uh, there's that show Hot Ones. Because if this is not funny, <laughs> you better be ready. Well, it might not be funny. I'd love it. <laughs> Hot ones, hot questions, even, uh, what is it, hot wings, even hotter questions, something like that. It's where they eat the hot wings yeah. and they get hotter and hotter. And they, he interviews big celebrities. He had Gwyneth Paltrow on uh, to talk about her goop line, you know, that we make fun mm -hmm. of all the time, is now in Target and on Amazon. So that's a huge deal for her lifestyle brand. It's a lot of yeah. skincare stuff. But I thought the interview was really interesting. And she definitely uh, knows about business because um, he brings up you know these provocative items that you put out the candle smells like mm -hmm. vagina and you know that stuff you know how do you balance being provocative with also trying to uh you know stay true to yourself and sell a brand and they talk about those things and um but in it she's still kind of a wha uh, hollywood wacko she talks about growing her own food and things like that and then she starts talking about um herbs and it's just so ridiculous but I think I think you might like it. I'm gonna I'll play it right here. Oh wait a minute, I did it again. Let's try this right here. I love herbs. I love. I know it's boring, but basil is my favorite. That's not boring. It's just That's so. Not at all. Don't apologize for that. Fragrant and almost like it's so optimistic, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> I love. Herbs. And he just like busts out. <laughs> You were like uh, fresh basil, dried basil. Uh, no, tonight I think I'm going to go for optimistic basil. It's so fresh and op it's optimistic. optimistic. It's like, what the hell is that? And then she goes on to explain, you know, it's like, you know, tomatoes coming into season in spring and summer. But it's just like another one of those uh, obnoxious, like Hollywood, you know. Yeah. And, and I tweeted that video out and I just wrote, I've been saying this for years. <laughs> <laughs> no one liked it, but I thought it was funny. Uh, yeah, and, and, and you know, she gets a double dose, triple dose, I think, of uh, a Hollywood lunacy because her parents are yeah. Hollywood lunatics as yeah. well. So she's, that's all she's ever known. Her whole life. Is stupid Hollywood stuff. Yeah, I love that. I'll like have basil. the optimistic basil. <laughs> um, yeah, I'll have the margarita pizza. Optimistic basil. <laughs> Yeah, I love it. Love it, love it. I love, though, that the guy, you know, had the guts to just laugh at her. Yeah, he does. That's funny. Yeah. Now, when somebody goes on that show, they, does she eat just as hot? Of, they give her as hot of stuff as they give, I don't know, like when Shaq is on there sure, or whatever. Yeah. Or does she get more mild? No, they, it's, it's all specific sauces, so there's like 10 of them or whatever. Yeah. And a lot of guests have gone, I don't believe that you're eating the same thing I'm eating. And they'll switch the the boards that the, mm -hmm. the wings are placed out on, but they're always the same. But you can't go and say, all right, I'll go on the show, but I don't want the super hot. I'm, I'm not going to be able to just give me some mild wings to eat. You can't do that? No. And there have been people that have quit early, but very few. Uh, DJ yeah. Khaled was the most famous one. He, was, he got to like the second wing and was like, I can't do it anymore. Uh, but most people eat all and go all the way through it. And they, I mean, when they get to the later numbers, there are some intense reactions to those sauces. And he's eating them along with them. Yeah, every every one. time. Yeah, he said, if I never have to see it, and because now when people see him out yeah. at restaurants and stuff, they're like, can you send him some wings? Mm -hmm. He said, if I never have to eat another chicken wing, I'd be fine. But I still like the hot sauces and stuff. DJ Khaled. I'm sure he was getting a, a boatload of brilliance out of him. Anyway. Oh, I know. Yeah, but it's so stupid. So does the interview end when they quit? Uh, basically. Basically. And that's like the high. 
think she was like, I'm just going to put them on a spoon here. And yeah. She said mainline it. I was like, holy crap. She's no joke. Yeah. Maybe maybe because she's um, gotten to be a vegetarian. Oh, is that why? Maybe. I don't some, know. Some, are, some celebrities want uh, vegan wings, but most of them, you know, just want regular chicken wings, including Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah. I'm surprised. She eats meat. I would rather just take a, a spoonful of the sauce than a vegan wing. If those are my choices, yeah. I'm not eating a vegan wing. Just let me, I'll have a teaspoon of the sauce. Yeah, they look terrible, too. Ugh. All opaque looking. Yeah, and they're weirdly shaped, and it's like, there's no way that's at all wing, a chicken wing. Hmm. All right. Do um, you think I ought to get the toupee just to see what happens? Riggins, we had the story this morning of these super super real looking toupees and i found them a long time ago and they were um, only available and you'd see these videos on the internets uh, from somewhere like turkey or egypt or somewhere like that but they've made it into u.s america Uh, a little white girl was doing it to a white man in u.s america and the glue stays for six months you don't have to get it you get any maintenance for six months they put it on there they cut it they cut your hair around it and it looks super real when they first get finished with it now i don't know what it looks like in a week <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah i mean if it if it's going to be like regular hair you probably got to figure out how to clean it and maintain it but they said you can shampoo it and you take a shower with it whatever you need but i just don't know how you make any type of fake hair look real yeah. after it's been in your head for a while because there's no natural oil in it yeah. like you can tell and i'm sorry ladies but we can tell when you've had extensions in for a while and they start splitting and fraying and doing you know we can tell because it's not getting the natural oil from your head from your skin into it but it's a thousand dollars every time you get one of these toupees. Yeah, I don't know. My my big thing is I think you should do it, but I w- we got to figure out the style, because you know, I don't know. I think you can go terribly wrong with that. Mm-hmm. Like you don't want to yeah. look like Chris Angel with a long dark no, 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 length, no. you know, bouffant. No, I would have maybe have a little bit of spiky going though. Whose hair do you think? What celebrity's hair do you think would look good on your head? Like you see mm-hmm. that guy and you go, that I could do that. I should have that. Uh, Cause you like Zac Efron's hair. But you probably don't want mm, Zac Efron's hair on your head. No, I'm not sure. Like Ray Romano. No, maybe like um, the way Nate Bergazzi's Gatsy's hair looks now, Nate Bergazzi. Um, but I've never been, but his is kind of, it's parted to the side and, and, uh, and I've never Salt had and pepper. Yeah. You'd want it salt and pepper. Kind of, yeah. Yeah, that's a good haircut on Nate. But it really doesn't matter because, I don't I don't know. It's like we were talking about this morning. It's not something that you can do gradually. It's just one day you're bald, the next day you have a ton of hair. Yeah, I think it's hysterical. Yeah. <laughs> And I'd have to go with that. And, then, and and the whole thing, like where we have to kind of acknowledge it, yeah. but not acknowledge it. It's so funny the and way I would, we uh, react to that. And that's the thing. I would want to do it as a bit. Yeah. Not have to. not do it just say, hey, I wanted some hair, and so now I've got it. Live with it. Yeah. Just, you know, don't make fun of me. I would do it kind of as a bit. Yeah, you have to. Because the the guys that are really doing that. I mean, they take like three months sabbaticals from their friends mm-hmm. and family so they can reemerge with like this new hair. It's so funny. <laughs> but it's a thousand bucks, you said? Yeah. Uh-huh. So I would, if I did it, I would want it to be somebody who's, you know, a sponsor. You know, they get advertising out of it. Yeah. Because I don't have a thousand dollars to just go play a prank with, I you know. Hair. No. Who does it? Do you know the place that does it? Mm, I don't think they said it in the story. Maybe there was a link. Uh, let me see. We should get uh, somebody on the podcast to talk about the thing, the conversations they have with the guys that come in to get these kind of things. Like, why did they decide mm-hmm. on getting the toupee? Why is it worth a thousand dollars? Well, I mean, the toupee is cheaper um, than a hair transplant. Yeah. Um, but 
the hair transplant is actually your hair and it grows and it, you know it's it's natural hair so that's why it's more expensive and it's a surgical procedure um mm-hmm. uh, let's see the story came from uh rob report more realistic than ever toupees are luxury or luxury uh world's newest flex okay i'll go check that. uh Let's see. These, the ones that they have here in New York, and I'm not going to New York for any damn thing. You wouldn't even go up there just to get the hair? No. Oh, come on. Mm -mm. I'll go. You don't need it. Yeah, but I would go to get a toupee. I think that'd be so much fun to have a toupee. (laughs) And it covers up all whatever you got. Yeah, and this guy had the uh, that they're showing in the video has the the horseshoe, the whole thing. She cuts all of the horseshoe part to match up with the haircut she's going to give the toupee, and it does. I mean, it looks great, but again, that's on the first day as he's leaving the salon. Yeah, well, it's like every other haircut; it always looks the best, you know, the day after and soon after a haircut. Mm. So. But again, I would do it as a bit because everybody I know and and being so damn famous, you know, having my own fanatico club and everything, people would know one day to the next. Unless all of a sudden I wore a hat for six months and then all of a sudden I took it off one day and it was like, yeah, oh, he has hair under that hat. So you wouldn't wear it around in regular life? I would have to. It's stuck to your head for six months. Yeah. That's what I mean. I, I would say the whole time it's a bit. You know, I did this for a thing on the on the podcast or whatever. But I can't take it off for six months. And I would constantly be making jokes about my fake hair. Yeah, but what if you fall in love with it and then you're like, yeah, it's not a bit anymore. Like, I genuinely love this hair. Hmm. Then that would be funny. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see it. You know who's got good hair? Uh, Jimmy Fallon. Nobody yeah. ever talks about it, but he's got nice kind of wavy dark good hair hmm. i like his hair yeah maybe i don't know i've never i've never noticed it it's got good hair yeah hmm. we'll just have to figure out the style for you and then we'll go from there <laughs> yeah we'll put that on the list of uh you know get that right before i go on david spade's podcast with him yeah he's got good hair yeah it, he's older than i am too is he mm-hmm He's kind of kept maintained the same kind of look for a long time. Yeah. But uh, it looks good for him. Mm-hmm. Mine's bad. Mine, I'm in need of a full crazy toupee. <laughs> Can you imagine what Jody would say? Oh, I love it. What are you doing? Oh, well, I hope they're paying you for that. That's what she would say. I hope they're paying you for that because you look ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> all right that's it for today thank you for watching thanks for listening uh, love you bye serving the world it's tj's podcast